My name is Wanda Spears. Tell me, what is your date of birth? June the 17th, 1931. I was born and raised in Gentry, Arkansas. And this interview is for the Farmington Oral History Project, and we want to verify that we have your permission. Yes. Uh, who were your parents? My parents were Jay and Maddie Lunigan. Um, so tell me, when did you first move to Farmington and why did you move there? Well, my husband and I and my uh, youngest son, Kendall, moved over here in uh, February, uh, December of 1974. And my husband had uh, got on at the University of Arkansas as a boiler operator. So we sold our house in Siloam and moved over here on Lane Street. Uh, tell me about your husband. Who was he and where did he grow up? Russell Spears. He grew up uh, right around the Prairie Grove and Viney Grove and Prairie View communities. What are your earliest memories to Farmington after moving here? Well, it was a, a small, smaller town, lots smaller. And uh, I, I worked for the Farmington School uh, 15 years in the food service for Farmington School. How soon after you moved here did you start working for the school? About a year. Tell me about that. Who did you work for and what all did you do? Well, my first uh, supervisor in the lunchroom was Olita Wilson. And I worked for her for a year and then Virginia Risley took over. And she was uh, still there when I left and after 15 years of service. And I stayed on as a sub for several years. Uh, tell me about your superintendent. Who were your superintendents when you uh, were there? Well, I forget his name. Uh, Randall Lynch was there. Uh, who I know were some Rand of the, the administrators and staff you remember besides the ones in the kitchen? Well, I remember the elementary, and I can't think of his name now. Um, we just had the two buildings, the high school and the round building. Uh, is all we had. Well, just describe in your own words, what was school like back then? You mean here at Farmington? Yes, at Farmington when you worked there. Well, it was a lot smaller and, and it only had the two buildings. And um, Did you get to know a lot of the kids? Quite a few, yeah, as they come through the lunch line. Any of them whose names and memories stand out that you want to tell us about? Well, no, but I kept scrapbooks on a lot of the activities in the, maybe the basketball team or something like that. I kept up with that pretty much. Uh, tell me about the scrapbooks you made for the school. When did you start doing it? And well, I would take, uh, my husband was real interested in sports and he would pick one of the old star players and we'd keep all of those articles, and then I would give it to the one when he graduated. Just scrapbooks of write-ups about the school, you know. Who sport. were some of the ones you did that you remember? Well, uh, I just can't remember right off. Um, do you remember the championship football team? The state championship. Well, football. they might have been there just as we come over here. I think. I remember uh, the Benish boys, uh, Keith and Kevin, and I think they were one of the star football players. Uh, tell me about some of the first people you met when you came to Farmington. Well, we uh, we had been. A Southern Baptist, a Harvard Avenue Baptist Church in Siloam. So we came over and, and joined the Farmington Baptist First Baptist Church here. And I got acquainted with, you know, several people right there. Who are some of your friends and your church members that you became so, uh, associated with? 
Well, um, uh, Odie Pants and Peggy Pants, he, uh, he, my husband had gone to school with Odie at Prairie Grove. My husband went to school there till the 10th grade and then they moved to Siloam. He graduated from Siloam High School. But the Pences were our good friends, Odie and Peggy Pence, and uh, John and Steele, uh, Janie Steele were church members, Bill and Burt Moore were church members, and uh, Harold Dunham was our first pastor that had uh, pastored this church, full-time pastor. So he was our first pastor after we moved over here. Uh, tell me about, you used to do a newspaper column called Farmington Folks and Features. And tell me, how you, how'd you get started doing that? Well, I, we had got a new pastor here at the First Baptist Church, Preston Beeks. And I wrote an article and took it over there and turned it into Kathy. And uh, I told her I had missed the Farmington Folks and Features. The lady had wrote it, had moved away. So uh, she said, well, why don't you write it? And I said, oh, I couldn't because I just have a high school education. I don't type. I don't use a typewriter or anything like that. And uh, so about a week after that, she called me again and wanted to know if I'd consider it. So I said, well, I might try it. And I started in uh, 1980 and uh, wrote it for 26 years. That's when it was the Cherokee Group newspaper. So that um, went back to the Davis family. Tell me some of the things you, some examples of some of the stories you would put in there. Well, just mostly a gossip column, I'd call it. Well, give me some examples. Well, uh, I just, whatever, every day or where I worked or I wrote about that. And then when we started our uh, Senior Citizen Center, well, I kept up with that pretty well. And well, let's first talk, survey and on it. Let's talk about that. You were involved from the very beginning in the in establishing some type of a senior center there at the Soul City Hall and then later doing the new one. So let's start at the beginning. What was, how did that all start and who was helping you with that? Tell me how that happened. Well, uh, we had a volunteer lady that uh, volunteered to be our director. It was just a volunteer service and uh, she went door to door and we ran a survey in the Prairie Grove newspaper to see who would be interested in it. But after we started up our center, uh, we went once a week and once a month we would have a, a potluck for the city employees. Tell me about that, how'd that work? Well, that was really fun. Uh, you know, we just had fundraisers. We'd raised about a few thousand uh, dollars. Uh, maybe we'd have a uh, dances over at the old uh, uh, fire station right across the street. Ken Harvey and his band would uh, play for a fundraiser. And then we'd have chili suppers. And so we had a few thousand before to start, you know, before we got the big uh, donation from the city. So. Um. How did that program grow before you eventually built a new center? How, how often were you meeting? And well, just uh, once a week on Wednesday. And uh, then when the new building was finished, we started every day. So, uh, so that, what did it take to get the city to agree to build a, a senior center? I know there was a lot of work and money that went into that. Talk about well, that. Well, Jerry time. Hutton would come and meet with us uh, the first meetings would be Jerry Hunter, and uh, he was a big backer in it. And uh, Norm Keeling was uh, the director over the Meals on Wheels from Fedville, and he would come and kind of get us started off. 
And then Roy Humble was real active with us from the start. And we just kind of just, it just kind of grew for us to have a good center. So we had some dances over at the fire station, it was just across the street from the, where we met at the city hall. And uh, we had uh, chili suppers and we had raised about, oh, a few thousand dollars before we got the okay from the city and got a, then the Meals on Wheels uh, gave us, uh, I think, 40000 to go on. Uh, uh, talk about convincing the city in the first place to let you use your old city hall. How hard was that? Well, I don't remember. Mayor Drake was our, uh, I wasn't really the instigator too much in that. Uh, Marge Moon was more of the instigator in getting, you know, it really started. She'd go to door to door and ask people if, you know, if they'd be interested, the senior population would be interested in so organizing. Tell me like so, in a complete sentence, how, how important was that getting that started in Farmington? Well, uh, Jerry Hunton was, would come to some of our first meetings and he was behind us all the way. And uh, Mayor Drake and then Ernie Penn was uh, later on uh, the mayor and they were help and Roy Humble was and we had a committee that uh, you know worked on it so I didn't have much to do with that part of it. Um, do you, let's talk about that grand opening and tell me what a big deal that was. I remember that a lot of people came out for that and seemed to be a lot of excitement in 98 when they had that grand op that uh, groundbreaking. Talk, let's talk about that. Well, I don't think I was really there. I'm not sure whether I was there or not, but uh, it was, uh, you know, we were just thrilled to death to get it started. And after we had bought the property and everything from Bonnie Phillips. Uh, and, how, once you finally got the senior center set up, tell me in your own words, how big a deal was that? Well, it was, it was uh, really an improvement for us because... Oh. Hey, tell yeah. me more. Well, it's hard to remember right off, just, you know. Um. What are some other things you can remember about Farmington over the years? I know you've lived here a long time. Uh, let's talk about how the town went from just a few stores here and there now to lots of stores. Mm -hmm. Well, I think when we moved here, it was only a two lane. 62, I think, was just a two lane. So uh, that's been a big improvement. And... Uh, I just, you know, I think it's, they've done well by the environment and trees and shrubbery. It's a town that we'd be proud of. Uh, one of the things that uh, Farmington has done for many years to raise money for their local fire department is to hold their annual fireman's breakfast. Yes. Have you ever attended those? Yes. Tell me about it if you have. Yes, yes. That was one of the big events for the fundraiser for the fire department. And it was, we... Which, tell me which event that was now? The Farmington Fire Department Pancake Breakfast. Yeah, that was one of the highlights of the year. Uh, was, talk about how many people would come out for that and what kind of support they would have. Oh, that was... That fire station was full. I mean, the farmer, they just did an outstanding job with it. Uh, what else can you think of to say maybe that I haven't asked you about? Well, the school system has grown so much. I don't know, I'm just, I just started there with when the two buildings and now there's... Um, if someone, if someone had never been to Farmington and they said, tell me about the little town that you wrote the column about for years, 
What would you tell them to describe Farmington to them? Well, they call it a bedroom, kind of a bedroom from Farmington. That's what we was kind of known for, but now we're kind of getting up on the scale a little farther. Now everybody's wanting to move to Farmington. So. Uh, you made a decision many years ago to move here. Any regrets? No, I don't have any regrets. Um, that. Why are you glad you moved here? Well, I just, I just brought my family over and it just seemed like it's just been natural now for us to be here. Uh, if you had to complete this sentence, what would you say? My favorite thing about Farmington is... Well, it's kind of a city atmosphere and kind of a country atmosphere. I live on a dead end street and there's a creek. Farmington Creek runs right north of our house and I like the country atmosphere about it, but it's kind of getting overcrowded now.